South Africa has learned of the wildest, most insane fake qualification scandal ever in a country which is full of world-class fakers. But even the work of the great Matthew Lani has been put in the shade by what I'm going to tell you about. Also coming up, we now know all about the CADA deployment records of the ANC, but it didn't exactly go the way that did the DA wanted. And finally, in our latest edition of Uya Luta 99, we have have a brand new name to add to the, the list of the alleged corruption leaderboard. This is The Issue with Dan Corder, South Africa is a movie. Welcome to The Watch Party. As you know, this is the Thursday edition of the show where we do news worth knowing. We catch you up on some big stories from the last seven days in South Africa. If you're brand new, please pop us a subscribe if you like anything that I have to say. And of course, check out our podcasts and Patreons. Right, let's get into this world record-breaking fake qualification scandal. Langa Leswe Madonko is the co-founder of a private equity company named Summit Africa, which is responsible for managing more than 1.6 billion rands worth of telecom assets, as well as some municipal pension funds and a handful of other portfolios. And that is the last true thing you're going to hear on this story for a while, because Langa Leswe Madonko, it turns out, is also one of the greatest, if not greatest, fiction writers South Africa has ever seen. Step aside, Zeke Simdar, one of the greatest actors this country has ever seen, John Kani, you have nothing on this guy. Because in numerous posts on numerous websites of numerous companies and organizations that Madonko has been associated with over the last handful of years, it reads that he has a degree from the London School of Economics, the same one as the other faker Tabi Laoka claimed, yo, LSE must be sick of the plus 27 extension number. They must just, they must just block us now. Or at least to save time, can they just make a page on their website so it goes home, admissions, research, South Africans who have actually got a degree from us. Madonko's bios on all of these different websites also claim that he has degrees from the University of Pretoria and he's got multiple degrees in chartered accountancy and financial management. Right, are you ready for some truth? And listen, the truth is sometimes hard to swallow, but this much truth, this truth could be a choking hazard. So this is your warning. The truth is, Langa Lezoe Madonko has a metric. And with that, some creative writing, some smooth talking and a dream, this man has risen to managing billions of rands of assets for telecom and municipal pension funds. Yeah, South Africa is alive with possibilities because <laughs> the investigative journalist called Madonko on the phone and he said on the phone, Oh no, yeah, I only have a leave certificate. I didn't go to LAZ, I didn't go to University of Pretoria, I didn't work for McKinsey or JP Morgan or live in Los Angeles, all of that, have all of these qualifications. No, it must have been an administrative error. What kind of administrative error, Langa, leads to this CV being put by your name all over the internet? Unless maybe you have a colleague who has this exact CV, but then show, show them to us. And just like with Tabi Leoka before him, this is where it becomes interesting because just because he's been exposed for lying about his CV does not necessarily mean that he has broken the law. And so we wait to discover the fate of the fabulous fiction writer and supreme actor Langa Lezwe Madonko. I would read his book. I would watch his play. Second big story, CADA deployment. You probably in this country know of it as just the thing that the ANC does, but CADA deployment can happen pretty much anywhere in the world across any democratically elected government. Here's the idea. A political party wins an election, they come to power. They have a large amount of control over how the government is run. And when a government needs to fulfill a position in one of the go governmental organs of state, then that naturally means as they seek somebody to put in that position, that the ruling party has a degree of sway over who gets that job. And this is where it gets tricky because in theory the government is supposed to hire the best candidate for the job, whether that means they do the best, they're the best qualified, however the government perceives that. But there's also an argument to say that you should put in someone in those positions who is part of the democratically elected ruling party or at least a loyalist to the party's mandate and ideals so that you can reasonably say, well, the voters voted for what this party wants to do with the country and now we're going to put in someone who is committed to that cause. But of course, in South Africa, what that has meant time and time again with the ANC is unbelievably incompetent, shambolic people getting positions in government. And of course, there have also been so many awful corruption scandals involving people put in positions of power because they are part of the ANC and are then able to enable the able to enable uh, the looting of state resources. 
And that's why it's important that we South Africans know who has been deployed by the ANC in different positions of power as cadres, why they've been employed. And that's why we need the records of ANC meetings where decisions have been taken on cadre deployment. So that's the argument that the Democratic Alliance eventually brought before the Constitutional Court and the Constitutional Court agreed with them and ordered the African National Congress to turn over all of the minutes of their meetings and even all correspondence involving the deploying of cadres to government positions. And the ANC did hand over their records and they and the DA published them on the same day for the whole of South Africa to see, okay, well, mm, most of their, their records since 2018. Because the ANC claims that they've lost all of their minutes, meetings, records on cater deployment from 2012 to 2018, which is kind of a big deal because those were the Zuma years where so many caters were being deployed and then a ton of corruption was happening involving those caters. How did this happen? Well, the ANC claims that all of these records, all these minutes of meetings were on a laptop that crashed in June 2023. The fall guy for this allegedly true excuse is Tapelo Masilela. He's an ANC official who works in the Deputy Secretary's office and he's really not good at his job. Because apparently he also deleted numerous emails of correspondence between him and ANC hired Fikile Mbulula last year in 2023 also. Because his inbox was full. So he deleted all of these emails with this crucial information in it about cater deployment by a mistake. At the same time that the ANC was realizing that they were going to have to disclose their cater deployment records eventually. Vicky Lembalula also claims that the ANC didn't keep minutes in any of their meetings between 2012 and 2018. On a totally unrelated note, you should know that I have a condition where my voice gets super high and my face gets really flared when I encounter bullshit. And this is where things have become a bit confused because the DA did get all those cater deployment records that were then published. And then a few days later, they lost a cater deployment case in the courts. Essentially, the DA had been arguing that cater deployment should be deemed unconstitutional and therefore illegal in South Africa. And a lot of people got those two stories mixed up and thought, oh, well, they have the cater deployment records, but the courts have now said that what the ANC did in, with that cater deployment is totally okay. That's not what happened. The DA's cater deployment court case has been running for a long time and they only got these cater deployment records more recently. And so none of the information, the evidence of these latest findings were available for their court case. The DA's court case argued that political parties should not be allowed to influence who gets government jobs. And the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria threw that case out and were pretty damning. They essentially said that the DA wasted their time. In their exact wording, they said, it goes without saying that influencing government decisions is not the same as meddling in the affairs of government. They concluded that the ANC, like any other political party, is entitled to influence government decisions, including the appointment of senior staff to public administration, as long as the bright line between party and state is observed. But now that the DA has all these cater deployment records, they're going to go again and try to argue with this new evidence that what the ANC did went beyond just trying to influence the appointment of certain people to positions in government. But then a former DA mayor of Midfile, Bongani Baloy, came out and said that the DA was being hypocritical because they also practice cater deployment. Baloy said that when he was the DA mayor of Midfile from 2013 to 2021, he was required to submit a list of candidates for municipal heads of departments to the party's federal executive before making any appointments. And these positions included city manager, CFO, COO, chief audit executive, chief of police for metros, chief of emergency services, heads of communications and marketing. And Baloy came hard, hey? Like he came with examples, like specific ones. He said that in 2016, uh, Lindiwe was going to be city manager of Tswane. She aced the interview process, but the DA federal executive blocked the appointment. And then the municipality restarted the process and in the end appointed Muketsi Mosola, who then had to leave the municipality after, after a scandal involving an alleged 12 billion rand irregular tender granted to an engineering consulting company. The DA has denied all of these allegations, said that their processes are not the same as the ANC, and have essentially told Baloy to stop talking cuck. And finally, welcome back to Ouya Looter 99, the South African show that gives our very best looters the attention that they deserve. To our wonderful studio audience, hello, a looter continua to you, and to you watching at home, a very warm a looter continua to you also. Are you ready to welcome a brand new entrant onto our alleged 
alleged corruption leaderboard on all you loot at 99. And let me tell you, folks, you're lucky to be live today to witness a bit of history because we are about to crown a brand new number one. Yes, she is Boxberg's finest. And over 12 years working as an accountant for the same employer, managed to fleece her own bosses hundreds of times. Give it up for Hilda Steenkamp, who managed to steal 537 million rands. Yes, she might not be the most famous Hilda from Seven Delon, but when it comes to stealing from her own employers, she is truly the O-Boss. And we have a big moment for our alleged corruption leaderboard because it's time to add our first Red Star of Conviction. Yes, Hildegard Stenkamp has been found guilty and sentenced to 50 years imprisonment, which means that she'll never be proven innocent and never drop off the chart. So join us next week to find out if any budding looters make our leaderboard. That's all for Uya Luta 99 for this week. And remember, a looter continua. And that's our show. Thank you so much for watching The Issue with Dan Corder. This edition of News Worth Knowing. We appreciate your time. Pop us a subscribe if you haven't yet. Go check out our Patreon where we have exclusive expert interviews with South Africans who know all about the biggest issues facing our country. Also go check out our podcasts. They're longer, deeper analysis of what you find here. Perfect for listening to in the car or while I guess washing the dishes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Okay, see you on Monday. Have a great week.